Hello everyone, welcome back to Breno's Art. For those of you that don't know, my name is Breno and I'm here to share my work with you guys and hope to inspire and teach you something from my experiences in the art world. This video is going to be about one of my favorite projects called Place and Space, a project all about buildings and exploration around the built environment. I go through this sketchbook pretty quickly, so let me know if you guys want a more detailed version of it. Also, I plan on posting a video on, the, on my tips and tricks around GCSE art. So subscribe and leave a like to make sure you don't miss that. So let's get started. So I did a title page for the first page, which isn't necessary, but it's what came to mind at the start of the project. On the next page, we have a few sketches done in pencil. They were drawings of photographs taken by my teacher of places around Barbican, I think. This is one of my favourite pages. I enjoyed the experimentation of covering the photograph with masking tape and painting the negative space with acrylic. And it helped me see the environment in different ways. Did some work with black paper and white pencil slash pen. On this page, I experiment with acrylic paint and other media on photographs of buildings. Mind mapping helped me get some fresh ideas and see what direction I want to go in in this project. I also did some drawings using inky pens and water. This is my first artist research. This page is very visually appealing. There's a large title, images writing and a narrative starts here. Here is another artist research with some analysis of the artist and how they use materials to represent ideas around the built environment. I always made sure to do some work, drawings or copies of the, of the artist's work to show my understanding of their work. I said work like a thousand times there but it's okay. Here I changed things up. I had an idea in mind of doing a collage, like integrated as, as part of my sketchbook. It looked pretty cool and trippy, but it takes the project on a journey through different visual ideas and effects. One of the reasons I got a good mark on this project was because I was constantly experimenting with different media and ideas. I always made sure that it was relevant to the project and made sure I was critical about my ideas before moving on. I also experiment with Rachel Whitery's techniques around casting, so I casted a water ball to see if it was possible, possible direction to go in. Here you will see I also did a few um, photographs, took a few photographs. Next you will see some paintings inspired by Sarah Morris. I had a lot of fun doing this, it was very satisfying to peel off the tape after painting. This is just me having fun with different colours and medium, experimenting. Uh, little fun. Over the next few pages you'll see me exploring different artists work by applying their techniques and ideas to my own work using my own photography, my own ideas, my own skills and whatever etc. I decided then to do some more experiments in a particular direction. So I really enjoyed John Virtue's work and I did some more work on that, experimenting with scale and just practicing his techniques. And I do that for a few pages. 
my own photography as reference. I changed things up to do some more work on using pen and water like I had done at the start of the project. I just want I didn't want to fully stick to one type of outcome so I changed it. Here you will see me using the inky pen and some water to make sure it flowed and had a very interesting effect. You'll see me opening this right now and I really like this drawing of this building. It was done in blue biro and took me a lot of time. So pay attention to the constant experimentation. I haven't settled on a particular idea or medium. I am in like a, a fluid state where I try a little bit of everything. At this stage, I finally decide on taking a big leap in the project. I decide to do three A2, five to eight hours, so three. Each one took approximately five to eight hours for this project. I tried to put my own style to them using different textures and brush strokes. I'm moving on quickly here, but I'll do a complete separate video on my final pieces and five hour pieces. Funny thing is, I took a huge detour in this project, looking at fluidity and how I could relate that to a building. I look at paint pouring techniques and artists such as Mark Bradford, but it's not completely irrelevant because I still incorporate ideas and skills that I learnt from experimentation in Sarah Morris's work earlier in the project. So I do some my own pause and experiment with that which leads me to my final piece which is huge and I'll do a complete separate video on those as well. This was one, one of my favorite pieces actually. I used thin pieces of tape and acrylic paint. I made sure to stick to only a limited color palette and it really was really successful. It was small scale, so it shows you you don't have to go really big to show an idea and it's still relevant. This page shows a, a building that was being demolished next to my school at the time. So I decided to do some work around that and it represents ideas around the building and the community around it. Different themes here, you have destruction, you have an end of a cycle, an end of a life. A building came to an end and you know, it happens. And just a few sketches at the end, in black and white, just to put in some more work in there. But guys, that is it everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. If you found this video useful, please share it with someone who you think might find it useful. Please subscribe if you haven't already and check out my Instagram. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. And I'll see you guys next time.